joke. It's just Rishi. But hey, we're back again with yet another video. And that is Best Buys. <laughs> Which is the better value for money? So thank you once again for joining us for yet another video where we will be going through finding the best value for your money. Now understanding the best value for money is very important when looking at different options or contract services such as your mobile phone deals. And when deciding on a purchase, it is worth comparing what is on offer to work out the best deal. And I hear a lot of my students asking me, but why am I learning this? How is it going to apply to the real world? Well, here it is. In this topic, you will be taught how we can simply compare at least two similar items or more for each of the products that you're thinking of paying for. And now in these six questions that we're going to be going through, we're going to take a look at the information that we've been given on comparing a product or a service, the terms that are on offer, as well as the price. So most people have a mobile phone or a landline, but how much you pay for your phone can be worked out in many different ways. So it isn't always straightforward to work out what is the best value. Purchasing a mobile phone on contract means that you agree to pay a monthly bill for a set amount of time, for example, a year or two years. And that will give you a set amount of calling, minutes, text messages, and data per month. But then you can also get a mobile phone which is pay as you go. And with this type of plan, you pay for only the units that you use. And the unit costs are usually higher than a contract mobile, but there aren't any fixed monthly fees. So if we were trying to figure out what's better for us. We would take a look at the cost per month or the amount that we use. And that way we could compare whether a mobile phone for a contract is better or pay as you go. So again, I hope you can see the value here of how we are taking a look and comparing all of the different options and services that we have to see what will be cheaper for us. So now let's get started with this very video. Two packs of toilet rolls are available in the supermarket. And nine toilet rolls are for £3.15. And four toilet rolls are for £1.36. Now we need to work out which pack offers the best value for money. So the first thing I'm going to do is calculate one toilet roll. And the way I'm going to do that is by simply dividing the total amount by the number of toilet rolls. So I'll do the same for the four toilet rolls. I will have 136 divided by four and 315 divided by nine. So let's go ahead and work that out using our bus stop method. Now we know nine doesn't go into three, so you place a zero, but we know that nine goes into 31 and that is three times because three times nine is 27. We can then place the 27 here, subtract our amount here, and we're left with four, and then we'll bring the five down, so we now have 45. And then we can see that nine goes into 45 five times. So we now know the cost of one toilet roll on the basis of nine toilet rolls for three pound 15 is 35 pence. So now we'll do the same thing for the four toilet rolls. So we'll have 136 divided by four. Now the first step we'll take is that we know four doesn't go into one, so we'll place a zero. But we know four goes into 13 three times because four times three is 12. We then place that below and we subtract it and we get one as our remainder. And then we bring down our six, so that becomes 16. We then go ahead and calculate how many times four goes into 16, and we know that is four times, which means in terms of the four toilet rolls, one toilet roll will be worth 34 pence, so that is best for value. So I hope that question was clear, and I hope you can see how we've broken down that question to calculate one toilet roll, and then to find out which one is better value. Brilliant. 
Let's now go ahead and jump into question two. So potatoes cost nine pounds for a 12.5 kg bag at a farm shop. The same type of potatoes cost one pound 83 for a two and a half kg bag at a supermarket. So where are the potatoes the better value at the farm shop or the supermarket? Let's take a look. So the farm shop is nine pounds for 12.5 kg and the supermarket is one pound 83 for 2.5 kg. So I need to make both the weights the same. So I know that 2.5 times by five gives me 12.5. So now if I'm timesing the kg by five, I need to also times my amount by five. So now one pound 83 times five gives me nine pounds, 15 pence. And that would be for a 12.5 kg bag. And that means that the farm shop is better value by 15 pence. And there we are. So again, your main step is to make sure that the amount is the same, whether it's the pounds, whether it's a kg in this instance, or whether it's meters or some sort of measurement. Once you have that, you'll then be able to find out what is better value. Okay, let's go ahead and dive into question three. Don't forget to pause the video at any time, attempt the question and then press play to see if we're getting the same answers. You're doing great so far, so let's keep it up. Okay, so we have two different jars of the same coffee. And one we have is 200 grams and one we have is 300 grams. So we need to work out which jar offers the best value for money. So as we have 200 grams on one side and 300 grams on the other, I'm going to make this the same. And what I'm going to do is, is multiply 200 grams by three to get 600 grams and multiply 300 grams by two to get 600 grams. And now we have the same amount, but that means I need to do the same to the value. So in this case, I'll take my five pound 69 and I'll times this by three, which will then give me 17 pounds and seven pence. I then will go ahead and do the same to my 300 grams. I'll then go ahead and do the same to my seven pound 49, but I'll times this by two. And that there gives me 14 pound 98 pence, which means if I get 600 grams on the left hand side, it will cost me 17 pound seven pence. But if I take 600 grams on the right hand side, it will cost me 14 pounds 98. Therefore, we can say that the 300 grams for seven pound 49 is better value. So we can then say the 300 grams for seven pound 49 is better value. So that's just over two pounds that you're saving. And that's the same coffee that is available, but just in different sizes. So it's better if you get two 300 gram jars of the same coffee rather than having three 200 grams jars of the same coffee. Perfect. Let's now move over to question four. A brand of shampoo is available in two different bottles. We have 900 ml for £5.50 and we have 400 ml for £2.50. Let's now work out which bottle offers the best value for money. Now I'm going to pause here. I want you to attempt this and then we're going to press play and go through it together. You may begin. Okay, let's go through this question. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both values so I can get the value of 100 milliliters, which means I'm going to take this, divide this by nine to give me 100 ml, and I'm going to take five pound 50 and divide it by nine, and that would there give me 61.6 pence. I'll then take my 400 ml and I'll divide this by four, which gives me 100 ml, and I'll take two pound 50 and divide it by four, which gives me 62 and a half pence. So again, that means that for every 100 ml for the 900 ml, it would cost me 61.6 pence. But for the 400 ml, the 100 ml would cost me 
0.5 pence. So that means that the 900 ml is cheaper and that's again by 0 0.9 pence. So let's go into a little bit more detail for this question. So I need to make the milliliters the same. And I know that 100 milliliters goes into both of them without having a remainder. So I go ahead and divide both by nine. And same for the second bottle, I divide both by four. And by doing that, I'm making the value the same. So let's go ahead and do that. We have five pound 50, which I'm gonna take as 550, and I'm gonna divide this by nine. I know nine doesn't go into five, but nine does go into 55 six times, because nine times six is 54. I then take my difference, which is one, and I bring the remainder down, so we now have 10 left over. I then say nine goes into 10 once, and you have a remainder of one. So I put a point one, and that's how I got my 61.1. Apologies, I think I may have written 61.6. I'll go ahead and replace that by one, so 61.1 pence. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the 400 ml. I'm going to take my two pound 50, divide this by four. I know four doesn't go into two, but four goes into 25 six times because four times six is 24. I'll then take my difference, which is one, and bring the zero down, which was my remainder, and that gives me 10. And then I know four goes into 10 twice, and then we have a remainder once again, which is going to be two. But four doesn't go into two, so we put in our decimal and we put our zero, and we know that four goes into 25 times, and that there gives me 62.5 pence. So again, you need to know your four operations really well, which is your addition, your subtraction, your multiplication, and division. I hope you followed this question in a lot of detail, and I hope you now understand the methods we need to take to calculate this. Let's now move over to the next question. Question five. Three packs of tea bags are available in the supermarket. Now, which pack offers the best value for money? So now what I'm going to do is go ahead and divide all the numbers to calculate how many tea bags I can get for one pound. Now, I know this is a slightly different method. And the reason I'm showing you this is to show is to highlight that we've not only can divide it to get the same number of grams or milliliters, but we can also do the same to calculate it on the basis of one pound. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna take pack A, we'll divide this by five. I'll take pack B, we'll divide this by four, and I'll take pack three and divide that by three. So now we know 240 divided by five equals 48, and we know five pound divided by five equals one pound. So we know we can get 48 tea bags for one pound. We'll do the same with the 200 tea bags. We know 200 divided by four equals 50 tea bags, and that will also be for one pound. And then finally for pack C, we know we'll have 160 divided by three, which will give me 53.3, and that will equal one pound. So all in all, we know that the best value is pack C because we get 53.3 tea bags for the one pound. Now, realistically, you won't get the 0.3 occurring tea bags, but 53 is larger than 50 and 48. So we can say that pack C is much better. Magnificent. And let's now move over into our final question. So now we have two packs of tea bags that are available in the supermarket. And we now have a percentage attached to this. So which pack offers the best value for money? Feel free to pause the video, attempt the question, and then press play. Okay, let's go through this. So it states for pack A, we can get 240 tea bags and 20% extra free. So I need to go ahead and calculate 20% of 240. So we know 10% equals 24. So 20% will be double, which is 48. So then I'll have 240 plus 48, 
which equals 288. And that will there cost me four pounds. Now for pack B, we have 240 tea bags and we have 15% off the normal price of four pounds. So now let's work out 10% of four pounds, which is 40 pence, 5%, which is 20 pence. And if we add that together, we have 15%, which is 60 pence. So now if we take our four pounds and take away 60 pence, we're left with three pounds 60. So 240 tea bags will cost three pound 60. So 240 tea bags will cost three pound 60. So now we're yet at another barrier. So now we can see that we have 288 tea bags for four pounds and 240 tea bags for three pounds 60. So now what we need to do is find out one number that is the same between pack A and pack B. So I'm going to divide both values to calculate the value of one tea bag, which means for pack A, I'll go ahead and have 400 and I'll divide this by 288, which will then give me 1.38 pence per tea bag. And then for pack B, I'll take three pound 40. Oh, I've just realized my mistake. It should be three pound 40 for both sides. So I'll take 340 and I'll divide that by 240 tea bags. And that there will give me 1.416 pence per tea bag. So all in all, I know that 1.38 pence is better value for money. So my answer is going to be pack A. And there we are. And that there brings us to the end of our video. I hope that was a quick insight into how we can work with Best Buys. And this again was the question that I was faced with. Why do we need to learn this? Well, here we are. This is where you will be applying the maths in a real use case. You will be faced with many situations similar to this. So I hope I've given you the introduction to attempt questions similar to this. So keep up the great work. Repetition is key. If you need any help, don't forget to comment below. Or if you have any feedback, if you want me to dive deeper into questions similar to this, comment below and I'll be sure to make another video. Keep up the great work and I'll see you in the next video.